Catherine, first of all, you have such a great cast, and I just want to see a one f- full movie. I can watch an Ernie Hudson movie as, as a lead a million times a day, right? So but can you can you speak to the fact that you have great, so many great actors, okay, but you're also nurturing, or maybe he's nurturing you, the talents of, of uh, Christopher Converti. Can What does he bring to the table, and how awesome is it to work with such great vets, but then also having the, someone who can teach you something, this young person who can teach you as well? So that is a really fun question because Chris Con- Christopher Convery, you know, really did surprise me. He has to play is a young actor, you know, beginning of his career. He had so much confidence that he's playing all these scenes with Brian Cox. You know, how do you hold your own as a kid, you know, with Brian Cox and Kate and Ernie, you know, all those beautiful scenes. He ha- he was fearless. You know, he he understood what he he understood that character. The character is tough in his own way. He's a curious kid. He's a special kid. And he stayed true to himself. He would never go off base and overact or anything. You know, he really stayed centered. I was amazed by him, you know, and he's such a lovely person. He's so, you know, creative and curious and asking all kinds of questions and learning every minute. I think he's going to be, you know, an amazing uh, force out there in the film business. You know, I just feel as a cinephile, shooting dramas to me on from a DP level seems to be very complex because you can either go flashy, you can either go documentary style. There's a fine line. And I think there's not enough credit that goes into the lensing of such a genre film. Can you just talk about the approach with your DP and making sure you got the right tone and balance as far as the look you wanted for this film? Right. Well, I think that's great. Noah is a beautiful DP and I had seen a few uh, pieces, works of his, a few films, and he's very thoughtful. And so he's really thinking things through. We really went to the locations and, and tried to feel it. You know, where is the light? Like we have a lot of time in that one house, which is challenging because um, Brian Cox is on an ankle bracelet. He can't leave. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to have a lot of scenes in this house. And you, you're looking at the light in the kitchen, you know, you want it, the house has to be a very, you know, um, low income level. She doesn't have money to fix it up. She doesn't even have money to pay for his epilepsy (laughs) medicine. So, you know, it's got that age, that patina. And so that was one thing, you know, finding the place where we could shoot that felt cramped and felt close, but still had light that would show you the changing times of the day because they spent a lot of time in that house morning, noon, night. So yeah, I think it was great that Noah, you know, really spent, we spent a lot of time thinking about how to keep it grounded too, because it's a very real film. I've been trying to answer this in my head since interviewing you years ago for 13 and then Twilight and just the fact that you're a great diverse genre hopper. And I think I might have come to that. Maybe this is oversimplifying it. Is it just basically you're interested in people and humanity? And that's why whether it's animation, lookbooks, production design, directing di- different films, it's an interest in humanity, which actually leads you forth to these different avenues. Or am I oversimplifying the, the that theory? I think that's a good theory that I am. That's a great answer. (laughs) If I, because um, it is the humanity in this story, you know, you feel for each of the characters in a deep way. When I read the script, I feel for a man or any person in our lives that thinks about their past and thinks about the mistakes they've made. How could I do better? How could I reconnect with that person that I hurt? You know, can I take, instead of just wallowing in the past, can I take actual action, which I thought was beautiful that Brian's care, he takes real action to fix things. I mean, physically fix things emotionally. So I love that. That was just, you know, how do you reconnect? That's such an important thing. Or how do you connect? I guess he hadn't even ever met his grandson. So how do you build that trust? On on the simple word of connect, uh, can you just talk about the layer of having you know, Tyson Ritter, who, who you know pretty well, and then just that collaboration with Eels, with E, and just I love having that music layer to your film. It's just so subtle. And after this, I just want to 
while just wallowing that music for a while after watching your movie. It's, it's amazing stuff. Talk about that choice. Oh my God. That is so cool that you picked up on that because of course I love Tyson and he did uh, another project with me, Miss You Already. And he wrote a very emotional and beautiful song for that. Uh, There's a place. So I, I was trying to think about this character. And at first I never thought about Tyson playing it because I see Tyson as just a lovely, fun, creative musical soul, not with that violent streak. But, you know, I said, Tyson, do you, I want to send you this, but do you think you, I don't want to offend you, you know, the, the violence and everything, does it work? You know, could you go there? And he's like, oh yeah, I have things in my past. He's talked about that he could, you know, go there and feel that. So, and then he is the one that came up and said, I've been working with Mark um, from the Eels and uh, E from the Eels, and we're writing some things together and, you know, see what you think, Catherine. Of course, I'm just like astounded. Then Mark uh, started sending me a few pieces. He came and saw the movie. He sent me some um, pieces of music, uh, that one song that's just, I thought, you know, that is the most perfect, beautiful song about regret and the voice. So you now have the older voice of Mark, the younger voice of Tyson kind of becoming the two male characters that are dancing around this violence. I mean, it's just so late. And then Tyson wrote that beautiful song for the end. You know, it was, um, you know, a magical, <laughs> beautiful thing when that happens. Yeah. You know, I'm going to ask some life advice for you from you, uh, Catherine. Most of my life has been spent in press junkets, as you know, in uh, screening rooms and watching movies, doing interviews. And mm -hmm. now I was wondering if, if I go out and actually travel, is Barcelona a great destination place to just get get outside of Los Angeles and outside of my own box? Oh, yeah. You know, I did just go to Barcelona and it's so cool. It's just there's, you know, all of Antonio Gaudí's architecture. And then there's just so much history in that city. And it's fun. Get on the bike, ride all around. Just look at all, you know, as an architect, my mind was blown there. <laughs> and, you know, the food, the people. Yeah, that's a great place. Exactly. You got to get out there. Yeah, Catherine, and final question is, um, what can people, what, what continues to inspire you about this film, which is hard to actually get on streaming or Blu-ray or DVD, what inspires you about first Angelo, my love? And then the next question I'm going to ask you is, what can I expect from the Nativity Story? Because that's another film from your canon that I, I want to watch next. So just a two-part question, and then we're out of here, I guess. Oh, my God, that's such a good, you really do your research. You're awesome. <laughs> So Angelo, my love, oh, yeah, it's, it's, is it pretty hard to find? So hard. I mean, it's it's on YouTube. I don't want to do that. I want to actually find and pay for it. So Properly. Yeah. So um, I just thought it was so interesting. And I realized that it was very much like, you know, 13, that Robert Duvall found this kid. He was inspired by that kid, you know, and that kid had such a wild life. I was inspired by Nikki and what she was trying to navigate you know, and so it's just very personal that he used real people in there. He took you into a world that you'd never seen. And most people would have never seen and been aware of. So it's a yeah, very powerful world. And then, uh, oh, okay, then the last one was... The Nativity Story. What can I expect from watching this? Because I see so many people on Twitter just saying that's an underrated film, wonderful film for the holidays, just really great portrayals. What, what can I expect? So. Well, it's the first film where you see Oscar Isaac. So that's pretty amazing. You know, and Keisha Cashel Hughes is from Whale Rider is beautiful in that movie. But I think it, one revelation for me is just feeling... Oscar, you know, the, the birth of a star, <laughs> really somebody that ha you have so, so much empathy, Joseph, you know, his wife is pregnant and he's not the father, but he still takes her on this and may. So even just the personal story, um, you know, and we try to really keep it grounded. We had a Middle Eastern cast from mostly Middle Eastern cast from 26 different countries, you know, and we shot it, you know, in these beautiful locations. So it's, it's very, um, neo, um, very real, like a lot of realism in a way, I guess you could say very kind of grounded. And we learned, we had a, um, a boot camp, uh, Nazareth boot camp where we learned how to make goat cheese and milk the goats and you know how to pick the olives and everything because you know I'm talking to all the actors 
We can't sit in between takes. You don't sit around and look at your cell phone. You know, in the year 2000, you know, in the year zero AD, you had, you're always doing something. You're always making something. It's very, you're very connected to the land and grounded. So it was just, it's, it'll be kind of interesting for you to see it, I think. Yeah. Catherine, so much, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you and um, take care. Yeah, thank you. Wow, I love all your deep questions. <laughs> okay, thank you, Catherine. Thank you, and, Samantha. Oh, yeah. Have fun. I hope you go to Barcelona. Have fun. I yeah. promise. Okay. <laughs> thank okay. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.